So here we are making now uh, a new mesh bag. And the uh, base material it's made from is this stuff here. It's made out of a fairly stiff plastic and it's called oyster mesh. Did you cut it to a specific length? Yep. What's that length? That length is uh, 1200 or three, four feet. 1200 millimeters, and four 400. feet. Yeah. After it's cut to size, cut to length, again, uh, 120 milli, no, 1,200 millimeter, 1 1.2 meter length of the material, which is, what do we measure? Um, four feet. Yeah, four feet, and the width of it was about... Nine, three feet, 900. 900 millimeter. Mm -hmm. And now we're using some zip ties to give the bag its basic shape here. So it's essentially stapled together now. No catches. No catches. What's this instrument called? That's a ring tool. C ring tool. I roll this until it's in the center. So okay. you know that's in the center. Then you just fold it down. And I'll just go walk. One on either side of that, in the center. About one zip tie every three or four squares, it looks like. Huh? Yep. A bit of PVC pipe. All right, so what diameter pipe do we use here? 20 mil pressure pipe. Okay, millimeter PVC pipe. Slide that in. Just got to calculate what size it is. So the PVC pipe is just so it holds its shape, right? Yep. It's just once it all comes in, then it, it stops the side of the bag wanting to fold in on you. Okay. Just feed it into the one under up there. Hold over and just get a bit of wire with a hook on it. Put that on there. Okay. there. And you space it so that it's in the middle of your bag. And then we use longer zip ties. to hold this in position. So what do you call this piece of work here? Oh, this, this is just a hook onto your bottom rope so that it's attached so you can just change it. Mm -hmm. If it gets dirty, you can change it. Uh, if you're doing it once a week or every day, you don't need to do it. It'll get to a stage there where you'll need to change it so you don't want that spliced onto your loop. Right. Okay. That's All the, right. main, the main shape of it. Okay. Then we get our deans that we've made. Okay. Right. A bit of PVC pipe, get the split. And what would you call this part? This is the hinge. You call it the hinge. But the overall piece here. Oh, this this would be the um, the bubble retainer. Bubble retainer. All yep. right. Yep. Bubble retainer with a PVC pipe hinge. That's it. Loose as anything. There's nothing to hold it from opening. Okay. We are putting in a couple of links here. They're virtually that just the, guide links for your cord. The release, release cord, cord will be run through these links here.
This might be changed in a future version where we're looking at running the release cords through more electric conduit. Notice this link here is centered on the bag, aligned with the center of the bubble retainer. And this one here is on the side, and then the ARC will be mounted along this side here. That's correct. It virtually, it virtually opens because when it's, it's in there, it's Yeah, shut, it's, it's kind of bent it's a little like bit. It's like spring-loaded. Spring-loaded, and it just so comes open. for your yeah. bubbles to come out. Yeah, yeah. Whereas the other ones with the, without the PVC pipe, right. is that was hard up there, and this was a lot stiffer. Okay. So... So it's all about reducing friction here to make yep. this thing open as easily as possible. Exactly. So when you set it off, It'll when go. your strings release from the acoustic, the ARC one, yeah. away your bubbles go. Okay, Steve, so I can see now somewhere along the what line we went, somewhere along the way we went from a 10 mil to what looks like 8 mil. 8 here. mil, yep. Right. So how, how much... Um, 10 mil and then how much 8 mil is in the bag now? Is I've got 120 fathoms of 10 mil. Okay. And 80 fathoms of 8 mil. Okay, and what's the thinking behind these two strengths? Well, the 10 mil is when you got the weight of the trap. Yeah. The 8 mil is only just there to get get you the, the weight. Okay. There's no weight on the 8 mil. It's no weight on the eight mil. No. So in other words, this. Right. So this this bag therefore is set up for use at a maximum water depth of 120 fathoms. Therefore, right, because you have 120 fathoms of bottom rope. Of bottom rope, yeah. Yep. And the rest is slack, right? Yep. So now we have two bubbles that go in here. Yep. So a hinge to go on. Okay. I'll just zippy tie that and then we'll So it's important that the bubbles are at the very top. If they are too deep down, not enough rope in there, then the mesh bag would fold all over them and it may not come, it may not open up, right? That's right. I'll put a zippy tie on that. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's it as it's done. Yeah. And you can see by that, the bubbles are virtually ready to come straight out. Okay. Right. There's no interference of the bag or anything. Yeah. So when we're looking at the setup of the cage here that's over the release mechanism, there's a flat side here and that's up against the bag. It's very important that it stays up against the bag so that the force that works on the on the release cord here is straight up. If it were at an angle like this, the lever arm might jam. So, straight up force very important. Alright, let's fit her up. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the ARC is going to get attached to the release bag with some heavy zip ties. The sonar transducer end cap is above the bag so it's in it's not shielded that's the communication piece the antenna for it so that's not shielded by the bag and you you can talk to it no matter where the boat might be relative to the orientation of the bag here then you put the zippy ties zippy ties here on the cage so it there can't you twist. see can't twist so there you see the importance of the cage that's why we have a cage here made out of stainless steel parts. Once again, just plumbing parts. Stainless steel U-bolts and hose clamp. Make sure to use only stainless steel. Don't 316. Use 316 specifically. Don't use any anything inferior. All the hardware on the, the release itself is titanium, so that will stay fresh essentially forever. Again, release on the side of it here. Here we see a marking, a Fisher specific gear marking code. It's not the release code for the ARC. That one you want to keep uh, secret. It's like your pin number for it. 
but this is just gear number 24 and then there's a sheet that relates that to the uh, uh, release number of this bag or uh, of this release or serial number. The release cord pulls straight up, goes through here. There needs to be a good amount of tension on it. Then because you've got your zippy ties here on the top. Here it goes through the two links. And you have your zippy ties either side of your center one, so that that locates your string into the center of your bag. Okay, so there can be no knots or snags or anything in this release cord. Keeping the release cord clean is very, very important. So then we work out to where we are here. Right, and we normally go at least three to four holes. One, two, three, that's four. Mm -hmm. So we know that we've got to have our rubber with a little hook on it. So it's a little bungee here. Bungee here. I'm going to locate it so it's here. Okay. Like that. So then I'll just lay it there like that. Find so the position that, that I want. So and you're going to have like four squares of tension essentially in your, yep. in your bungee. So here you know how you have to watch it that your bag is well packed because if it's not over time the bubbles might go further down and you you lose that tension on the line and you know if there's no tension on the release cord it just sits there yeah well the bubbles would pull it out but it it could um could take days could take hours yeah how long do you think these bags might last well if they're anything like the GTR ones, I've got eight years out of a GTR bag. Okay. So. Yeah. GTR is the galvanic timed releases that are used here in the industry as well. And mm -hmm. always make sure you trim your zippy tire that you put, put it together on. So that's it. Ready to be deployed. Good amount of tension here. Use another little zippy tire to go through here. That's purely so you don't lose your string. Because once okay. it comes out, it can float away. So that there, every, that way you get your string back every time. Here's now the completed bag with uh, rope attached. And this was all done just as a demonstration. So not as efficient as it would normally be. But still, the whole manufacturing of the bag, the stuffing of it, the attachment of the release, and all that, all the while explaining it, took a total of 45 minutes. It's not too bad. This is how the trap is actually going to be connected to the release bag. So the trap would be at the end of this rope, which is in the bin here right now. Yeah. And you have your loop. And there's a loop at the end of the rope. Feed it through the loop. Goes through then. this loop here. Goes over the bag. Mm. There she is. Attached. Okay. Nice, nice attachment here. So the lift, the hauling force goes along this rope, along this rope, then it goes up here. This, this is the bottom end of the rope that's in the bag here. And if you, you know, to work, pull strongly on this, as would happen during hauling, the, yeah, I'll show you. the zip tie would break loose, right? And now, right? All your ropes out. All the ropes out, you know, and you're hauling it up. Remember at this point, the bag would already be empty because the bubbles would already have come out and come to the surface here. So you're really putting, uh, pulling on the bubble end of it coming up to here, which is the bottom of the rope in the bag, break this loose, Go down to here, around here, and hauling up the trap here. Meanwhile, the the bag itself, now being empty, is still attached via this clip to the hauling rope, and the bag will just, it's negative buoyant, it will just fold over and lie on the seafloor until you're hauling it up. All done.
You can see it from there? No. Yeah. Talia. Okay. Okay. All right, so I'm ready and Steve, you can call out like when it says, you know, armed and release acknowledged and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm ready to go here. Station for release. Oh, no. Waiting. Triggering release. Okay. Came right out. That's it. Hey, we did it.